but that idea of um of being present right and and offering people something that they might need in the way that they need it instead of how you think they should get it is important right so being able to talk to your daughter in the way that she needs to be talked to instead of talking to her in the way that you've heard other people talk to their kids right because it's not necessarily going to be appropriate for her mm-hmm. in the way that she needs to connect to you so that's an interesting thought I mean, it was a learning process. It was a learning process because, like I said, as a male and being around other males, they they tend to men te- tend to teach some men tend to teach their their sons to be firm, mm-hmm. to to never have that softer side. You know, they don't. They think if you have that softer side, you're becoming something else that they don't want. They they say stuff like, "Don't you know, men don't cry." boys don't cry get up you know wipe yourself off and keep going you know which in that you have to you know cipher the good parts and the not so good parts you know get up dust yourself off try again try again that is a good thing but at the same time you telling him never to cry you know so now you're trying to hold in his cry his pain his his suffering that he's dealing with um so like i said growing up in a household or being in a family with majority of women and now married into a family with a lot of women it kind of it helped me out then now you know so um it, it just as it, advice and you know golden nugget as they say to other men out there take that moment to yourself you know to deal with whatever it is if you are that male, you know, try to learn that when you say what you say, think about what you're saying before you say it to a young man, to to a young, you know, to a young woman, to anybody, you know, because you tell your daughter, you know, not to cry or your son not to cry or not to to do something in particular that can reflect and change their that trajectory of their life the motion of their life because when you tell this is coming from me a person who was told this not cry you know men don't cry you, you'll be all right get up and dust yourself off you know you have to as a kid you don't process you don't you can't process that you're just doing as you told and then you get older and you stick on to that old stuff and you still 30, 40, 50 years old, men don't cry. And now you're passing that down to the next generation and the next generation. And before you know it, you got something, you know, in the bloodline that you you shouldn't have. You know what I'm saying? Because you at that point, it's like a poison that you keep passing down, passing down. Everybody's sipping that poison that you're passing down. And that's not a good thing when it comes to mental health because if you never cry, you never deal with the situations. You never seek help. In the long run, it's going to affect somewhere. You know, it's going to affect your life. It's going to affect their lives. And the life of the people that come with you in that process. You know, a lot of marriages fall apart because people don't want to deal with stuff. People don't want to sit down somewhere and talk about what they really dealing with. And I'm talking about both, the male and the female. They're not willing to talk about what they're really dealing with because of something that made it happen in the past, something they pro- they went through, you know, being abused, being, you know, assaulted or anything, you know, anything in general. If you're not willing to deal with that and then you get in a marriage or a relationship with somebody, it's going to keep haunting you. It's going to keep bothering you. You know, it's going to keep bothering you because you're you're scared to stand up to it, to, you know, put your foot for your first foot out there to step into that doorway. You can't anybody can open the door, but you got to be willing to walk in that door. I can give you all the advice in the world. You can go to a psychiatrist, uh, you know, anybody, your minister, your pastor, they can give you all they can talk all day to you. But until you're willing to take that advice and really hone in on it 
and, and focus on it and do something about that situation, you know, it's just like another drug. And you tell you you're willing to hit rock bottom and say, look, I'm tired of being here. I'm tired of I'm tired of not being able to deal with my stress, not willing to, you know, what I'm saying I, I keep having strokes. I keep having panic attacks. I keep, you know, I had a heart attack until you are willing to deal with these things in your life and the things you got going on with you. It's going to be hard and it's going to stay hard until you are willing to reach out for help. Please. If y'all don't hear anything else, I say on here, all the jokes, all the love I have out here, please deal with the grief in your life, the stress. There are many, many outlets out here. Not just going fishing, hunting and stuff, but there's actually people you can sit down with, learn them, learn to know who they are and, and, and share, open up. In the process of you dealing with your grief, your stress, your situations, a lot of things, a lot of things will come out that you can deal with. I had to sit down with somebody, talk to them, Learn them, they learn me. I, 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 and you saying what you've been through a lot of times will help you deal with that situation. So, I just I need people to understand that that you what you say can affect others, and at the same time, if you're dealing with something and you're reflecting out on others, you need to deal with that. 